Hey guys, me, Brian, getting ready for the episode. Hope you guys like it. Uh, I've decided I'm going to take the show in a new direction. We're going to do something a little different uh, for this episode. Hopefully you guys like it. Uh, I think this could be a permanent change. I don't want to spoil it. I think you'll see it when you get there. You're listening to Reviewing History, your comedy history podcast. I'm filmmaker and teacher Brian Rupert, joined here by... As always, Tim Dalliaga. And... Aunt G. I have that stupid song you were just playing for me stuck in my head. I've been waiting on you. I've been... Future Island. Future Island. Seasons. (laughs) So what's up, guys? (laughs) Future Island's up. Yeah. <laughs> What's up with the uh, shades, man? My future's really bright. That's all. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We're gaining <laughs> followers. We're, I... <laughs> we're reaching stardom. <laughs> I think Steve did like a massive amount of drugs <laughs> and he's just blocking his eyes. <laughs> By the way, we do have to note every time Steve walks into the studio, recently, I have these glasses he on. has shades on now and he acts cool <laughs> and he thinks he's like Maverick. <laughs> I act cool. He does. Yeah. yeah. Just, he acts cool. Well, with like I the know coffee. that I know I'm better than you guys. He you comes I mean? in <laughs> like 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 a celebrity who's doing us a favor. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, right. Like, I don't have to be here. Yeah. <laughs> the little people. Yeah. 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 I've kind of had enough of you. I know. <laughs> I know. I have had enough of, of you. you. Uh, I saw a concert you. recently. Was it Limp Biscuit? It was Limp Biscuit. <laughs> I don't know how I guessed. I'm see, looking at your shirt. You want to see, see it though. Do you know who opened the show? A few people, right? The great Corey Feldman. Corey Feldman. But this man didn't see didn't Corey. see Corey Feldman. So you wasted everyone's time. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, doing nonsense. What the fuck, dude? Yeah. You could have heard, you could have heard Ascension Millennium. I didn't know that you've been a part of history. Instead, that, you're just a smudge. I know. I nothing. didn't know that he <laughs> opens the like show. It's like doors open and Corey's on. Yeah, you should have known. Should've I think known that's better. a mistake because the rest of the acts were like just fucking the most like boring rap ever. Like it was like background noise. They basically. weren't a. They mm-hmm. weren't no future islands. They weren't entertaining at all. At least Corey has the freak factor. Yeah, because people want to see Corey, so they're gonna get there early. My yeah. wife was very angry that you didn't see Corey. Me too. Yeah. And my wife. That was the first question. I was I like, know, he saw Limp Biscuit. Everybody, like, oh. everybody yeah. has asked that. How is Corey? You messed up. More people are interested in that than like. Yeah. Limp. Why? No one gives a shit about Limp Biscuit. It's 2024. Yeah, he has, is Corey pumping out new stuff? Yes. Is Limp Biscuit pumping out new stuff? Yeah. They just had a new album come out. Does anyone is care? That? Yeah. No. I didn't even listen to the song. <laughs> 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 I want to. I just haven't. You just went for the nookie. You know what I mean? The crowd, speaking of Nookie, the crowd there was ridiculous. Really? You had, obviously, a bunch of dudes like my age. Right. Well, that's who should be the demographic. Then you had girls my age dressed like, you had a wide range of girls dressed like Fred Durst, where they're in like white with backwards red Yankee hats. Is that why you're wearing a backwards red hat? Cosplaying as Durst? (laughs) Yeah. Are you cosplaying as Durst? I am Durst. (laughs) That's fucking weird. Just sweet Fred Durst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, like, the crowd was, like, girls like that. Like, some of them were really way too good looking to be at a Limp Bizkit concert. Anybody have UFO pants? There were a couple. Nice. And it was, like, there was one girl that I think was, like, a time traveler from, like, 1999. Yeah. Um, and then the weirdest thing was, like, there were, like. Were the Juggalos? There were, I didn't see any Juggalos. I feel like there's a lot of crossover there. You would think. Where did you even find this? Where do you find these things? You would think, but I don't know. I did. I'm not sure. Maybe Fred did play a gathering. We could ask our Juggalo correspondent mm. in the future. In fact, I will text him while you guys are talking. But um, <laughs> then there were like these like Staten Island guidettes. Sure. That were like 20 years old at the concert. No, that doesn't make any that sense. That was That's bizarre. Weird. That's yeah. weird. It's like. 
why are there 20 year old like, people at yeah. this Limp Bizkit show that aren't even like I could see if there were 20 year old rockers. No, I couldn't see that either because no one like Limp Bizkit is a band that f they had their 15 minutes of fame where they had they were massively famous, massively popular. But then the world turned on them. Whereas not only that, they just fell out of favor. It's like people started to vitriolically hate them. They became a punchline right. for everything wrong. In the same way Nickelback have. Yes. So it's like a young person would have been stopped from getting into a band like Limp Bizkit, you know, even if they weren't around. Plus the, the parents uh, brought them. No, because nobody actually likes Limp Bizkit, except Brian. This is true. Hey, I was there with Chuck. We were rocking out to the base. <laughs> <laughs> Show was fun, though. It was fun, and I'll tell you this: Fred did something pretty cool. What? So he jerked off on the crowd. <laughs> yeah, he, he came into the crowd. So he's he's on stage, and he's like, "Who who here is seeing their first Limp Biscuit show?" A couple of people. Put their Not hands. you. Not me. You're it's a vet. Yeah. This is my second one. <laughs> and he goes, "Who here is under 18? A couple of hands go up. Not Three. much. He goes, anybody under 18? Because the PNC stage is weirdly shaped. Mm -hmm. It's a terrible venue. Yeah. Yeah. It has sounds like, like shit. But it has this weird like area that's almost like a no man's land. The lawn. I was on the lawn. Mm -hmm. But the stage itself has like a weird area. Okay. With like almost empty space. Because usually a stage is flat. Mm -hmm. It's like this weird bubble. It's like part. a half U, right? Yeah. yeah. He can't he takes all the kids on stage. And he goes, you guys sit in the on the stage now, and you guys get the best seat in the house for Biscuit. And he has all these kids That's sitting cool. on the yeah. stage. Really? That's yeah. Cool. And, like, one guy was there who has been going to every Limp Biscuit show since, like, the 90s, and he always shows up dressed like Winnie the Pooh. Ooh. So he's a famous guy. He's special needs. He's, like, a famous, like, just Biscuit fan. His mom, his mom <laughs> drops him off. <laughs> it's like the, the fireman, the Jets fireman. Yeah. But he's the biscuit guy. He shows up. Uh -huh. Like when I was at my first biscuit show. He was there. He was there. He was there. And Fred Durst sees him. He's like, fucking Winnie the Pooh, man. And he's like, he's like, this guy. Is he just a New Yorker area? Yeah, I think he's a tri-state area. Okay. Guy. He doesn't like go to every no. show. Fred was like, the first time was like, this guy, every time I've ever played in New York, mm -hmm. he's here dressed as Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> and he's like, this feels like fucking like 10 years ago or whenever right. it was when I saw him. Yeah. Huh. So he's like, he sees him and he's like, hey, what's up, Pooh? <laughs> and Pooh has like a five-year-old with him. And he wow. goes, Pooh, you and your kid get to sit up here. <laughs> <laughs> so like the crowd has a bunch of children this on stage. This is bizarre. It was weird. And a psychopath. And I, I actually outfit. think this took too long because they didn't do an encore or anything. I mm -hmm. think they ran out of time. Uh -huh. Um. So they're on stage and he pulls all these kids up and he's doing a couple songs. And then a couple of times he got in the middle of the kids, made all the kids stand up. And they were all like <laughs> doing this with them, going their hands up. And then it was fun, man. It was a fun was cool. show. Did you break stuff? Yeah. Break stuff rolling. All the hits. <laughs> Any limp song you would want, they did. Mm -hmm. You know? There's only so many limp they songs. They knew what right? this was. They covered I'm um, Killing in the Name of. That's weird. Which was yeah, fun. That's a weird cover. <laughs> That yeah, makes sense for them, I guess. Yeah. It's in the genre. Who 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 is the the creepy guitar player guy with the fucking mask? What's I almost it? said John Five. It's not John Five. Wasn't it a makeup? John Otto, take him to the Matthews Bridge. That's the DJ. Yeah. No, the fucking guy. He's got like a crazy name. He does, and I'm drawing a blank on it. Wes Borland. Ah, uh, yes. How was oh. he? Was he was he good. There? Yeah, it was fun. It's a good show. I wish you would have came. It was really cheap. I thought about it, but if, if I was there and I missed Corey, I would have fucking, I would have walked out. Mm -hmm. I would have killed you. <laughs> I would have been there for Corey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta show your support. <laughs> yeah. But we have some emails. Okay. We do. Does anybody else have anything going on? Go for yeah, it. Yeah, just read the emails. All right. I've been waiting for you. My dearest Aunt G. That's me. Wow, it's directed to him? It's just for Aunt. Oh, this is banana related, isn't it? <laughs> I hope this- Oh, it's- You got to read it like a Civil War guy, because he said, my dearest. Uh, my dearest Aunt G. <laughs> I hope this email finds you well. 
as you know, I have been an avid listener of your podcast for quite some time now. And I felt compelled to reach out and express my deep admiration and appreciation for the incredible work you do. Your contributions to the pod are nothing short of phenomenal. This is, this is supposed to be read like this. Yes. This is perfect. This is perfect. And it is truly astonishing to witness your vast knowledge and expertise <laughs> unfold seamlessly throughout each episode. Thank you. What strikes me most is your remarkable ability to delve into the intricacies of historical movies without ever referring to notes, unlike other podcast hosts. <laughs> See, I don't like that. Takes a shot at us. <laughs> I can't say I never look at it. I do sometimes look at notes, but I do. There's I, a lot off the top of your head. It's, yeah. it, you most, have bullet points. Most of my you know? stuff comes from uh, prior knowledge, and I do do research beforehand. Yeah. So I, I kind of. He puts in the effort. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I I absorb everything. Like yeah. I don't I don't like to not understand a topic. I don't like to read. I you know, like if if you if you come in here and you and you don't get it. And you're just reading something like it's the first time you're hearing the information. That's a problem. Which is me usually. Yes. <laughs> We're not going to point figures. You're a problem. <laughs> you're a big problem. <laughs> what strikes me most is your remarkable. Oh, uh, sorry. What strikes me most is your remarkable ability to delve into the intricacies. Oh, I said that. I'm you sorry. did this part. Um, but uh, do, by all means, read again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Makes you, him feel good. You have a unique talent for making history come alive and for fostering <laughs> a deep appreciation for this the is, art of filmmaking. This is the best compliment I've ever received. <laughs> <laughs> it was better than the wedding vows. Yeah. <laughs> I read all this in the hopes of you being able to answer one question that has been nagging at me for quite some time now. All right. Do you like bananas for the taste <laughs> or their shape? I eagerly await your response. Anyway, old Mary Todd's calling, so I guess it must be time for bed. Warm regards, Arthur Fonzarelli. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, well answer that. the question. Is uh, it the taste of the shape? It's both, of course. You, I mean, it's the whole package. You got to. never going to die. I adore the banana. It's never going to die. I adore the banana <laughs> in all its glory. <laughs> I, Steve, you made a awesome design <laughs> that you, we need to put on shit. What? <laughs> of Ant with the banana. I, oh, I haven't seen I, this. I made a design. Okay, I'll show it to you now. What did you do to it's me? It's fucking amazing. I made, a shirt, I made a shirt design, and the people, if you're watching it, probably uh, will see this, um, of your hand holding the banana, <laughs> <laughs> and it says, become ungovernable. <laughs> I like it. I think it's fantastic. And, uh, I, I'm probably I'm every put this on a shirt. Every banana point. open completely is a revolt <laughs> against the modern world. <laughs> so Back to our Simeon. If you're watching the video, you, you can see it. If you want the shirt, let me know. I'll, I'll put it up, up for sale on the site. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. This email is from. Uh, looks like Corey. Yes. Uh, Cor <laughs> How would you say this last name? D Feldman. Yeah, yeah Corey Feldman. I heard you missed my show. <laughs> you son of a bitch. I email everybody who skips my set individually. <laughs> hey, man, watch it skip out. Um, How do you spell it? Saint Melanie Young. Is that the real song? Yes. Oh, my God. What's uh, D A U W. Dow? D A U W. Dow. Dow. Corey Dow. Dow. Corey Dow. 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 Rapping Duke. Yeah. Well, can we explain what that is just in one nope. second? No, Rapping Duke. It's, it's like a morning Duke. radio thing from fucking 30 years ago. Okay. There you go. <laughs> All right. Um, love the show. When do you think Thanks. you'll do the movie Bloodsport? I would have done <laughs> oh, it already. God, enough. Enough with We're the not doing Bloodsport. It's not happening. <laughs> Did you I will fake this? I <laughs> will smash that every time it comes up. Why? Because it's, it's not, not real. real. It's based on a true story. No, it's not. <laughs> Frank Docks went and fought in the Kumite. <laughs> You're not getting blood sport. Get out of your head. <laughs> I want blood sport so bad, guys. <laughs> You're not getting it. <laughs> All right. This is this next email is really good. <laughs> 
uh, whoa, <laughs> the first line. What's up, tree N word? <laughs> Did he write it or no? No. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> I guess so. Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love all listeners. <laughs> uh, this email is titled Rough is a Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sub tree n words. I love that everyone who writes in is a day one fan. Like, shut yeah. the fuck up. We get it. <laughs> <laughs> Only he's on calling out the listeners. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Only day ones write in. <laughs> um, they said, anyways, long time, oh, first time funny. here. It's Kidding. Funny. First, I want to say that I believe you have found your audience. In one of the, so, I hope not because there's only like <laughs> fucking two hundred of them, <laughs> if that, if we're lucky. And they all insult us <laughs> constantly. <laughs> That's it. You've capped out. <laughs> Look, what I'm saying is, where there's one listener, where there's one mutant, there's, there's another, another and another. And another. <laughs> um, in one of the pick episodes, my favorite ones, post the one week blip. You guys were reading an email that verbatim is exactly how I would have emailed as well. I was like, what the fuck? Did I write this letter and forget about it? It wasn't me, but it was another prog rock less affable and easily malleable millennial. I don't really mess with prog too much, but that isn't the reason why I wrote this email. Rupp just finished a story about challenging a man to about a fist mm. for his disrespect talk and how upon the rejection Rupp had to stand on fucking business. <laughs> Decked him and helped his drunk friend. It's very true. Yeah. Also, I have been so drunk that I almost drowned in my own vomit. What? I was turned to the side, but only after vomiting all over myself. I wasn't in my own bed, though. Where were, were you? Of, men of the same ilk. <laughs> I can't answer that. Mm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Why am I asking you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Reply to him. <laughs> Seriously, though, Rupp is my kind of guy. I effing love his mindset. I wish it was our we're a PG guy show. We're not, we're not cursing. Yeah. 1v1 <laughs> isn't a fair fight against me. Checking the oil. We'll follow through on a par- promise. These are, all, these are all Brian quotes. Yeah. <laughs> when did I say 1v1 isn't a fair fight against me? In gangs in New York. I remember this because you were saying that you would have been <laughs> a great would, like fighter. Yeah, you, you would have beat up no. all those guys, all those boxers <laughs> yeah. from the eighteen hundreds. I would have. I would whoop all that fucking. And it's asses. like you're get your ass. Beat. You're retarded. One on one, I would beat McGloin's <laughs> ass. Yeah. You would get fish hooked so bad. I would check. You his are oil. a fiddling Benz, dude. <laughs> oh yeah, fiddling Benz. <laughs> he would get fish hooked by a scrap. <laughs> um. I will follow through on a promise to defend my own honor, motherfucker. Aunt Geo and Beaver, not at all warriors. <laughs> okay. They are like the Senate in 300 trying to cuck Leonidas' his wife. <laughs> they are. <laughs> We're watching a rape. Yeah. <laughs> they are great, but I don't want them fighting side by side with me. Okay. <laughs> Um, Is that right. the end of the email? No, that would be great. <laughs> that would be hysterical. So uh, he said, it made me want to tell you about the last fight I ever got in. I don't fight anymore, but a couple of years ago, I just. I'm some- a man of peace now. <laughs> I'm done killing. I've put the violence behind me. <laughs> This is uh, from the man with no name. It's, it's yeah. Clint Eastwood. Yeah. yeah, this is fucking Bill Money. What's his, what's his name? He has a name, and I thought he's he supposed to be yeah. the man with no name. Yeah, not untouchable. Unforgiven. He doesn't fight anymore, but he posts passive aggressive memes about fighting. <laughs> Never awakened a lion, but it fell asleep. Yeah. <laughs> He takes pictures of himself behind his steering wheel wearing sunglasses. (laughs) With a mean mug on. Um, uh, He even told his wife that he will pick a probably pick a fight. And sure enough, he was at work and took a break. From wait, I feel like you skipped a sentence. Yeah, where are we? It's very long, so I'm trying to. 
abbreviate. You're, like it's you're condensing it's, everything. It's gonna take like five minutes if I just read it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, he had to cross the intersection, and a car turning left was waiting for him to finish before completing his turn. Uh, is this a road rage incident? Oh, yeah. yeah. Is this guy so. confessing to a crime? The yeah. guy, the guy <laughs> honked at him while he was walking, and so he I got out. I started blasting, and he gave the guy the bird. Um, so after he completed, the guy starts yelling at him, and he spit at the oh, uh, no. at his car. <laughs> oh, it wasn't on him or his car. It was the sidewalk next to him. Just a nice howdy doody. Fuck you. Mm. Uh, he gets to the store. Who who did the spitting? Our, our, our listener. Okay. He spit uh, yeah. he said, at the car. You. Okay. He didn't yeah. hit him. Fuck you. Yeah. So he walks in. I do. I do it was a bite your thumb at me, but. Yeah. Yeah. Do you bite your thumb at me? Sir? <laughs> I, I do not bite my thumb at you, sir, but I do bite my thumb. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the car does a U turn nice. and Road starts conflicts. heading back. Oh, he's coming for the fight. So the guy gets out of the car. And he gets in the store, and he, he's six three, and he weighs more than our listener too. And he starts. Our listener is like, "This might be a fight. I lose." Mm-hmm. He's uh, he spots me and immediately tries to chirp again. Gets in my face, pointing, puffing his chest. Mm. He squares up. Uh, sorry, he's. I'm losing my place. Um, he squares up too, but he tries to do a jump scare to make me flinch. I'm not in a fighting stance to play, so when he did, I hit him with a three piece and Sick. a biscuit. Two piece with a biscuit. Yeah. Nice, nice. <laughs> uh, we're it's fighting just... inside the store. It's a matter of honor. <laughs> it's a matter of German pride. <laughs> Our listener's gonna get arrested for assault. <laughs> Uh, he's a big dude and he got some heavy fists and he was rocking him, but he's not going down. Mm-hmm. He hit me with one and I had to collect myself. Hit him with a left yeah, I'm, hook. I'm not trying to get jet. with too many of those. Hit him with an, an uppercut. uppercut. Kick Knock him, him in, in his ass. ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, eventually, <laughs> so they're just brawling, right? He yeah. takes a step back and there's a curb behind him. His ankle rolls. Oh, no. He falls flat on his shoulder and his hand smacks the cement, too. The big guy sees me on the ground and tries to jump on me. No lie. Put my foot on his groin and he uses the leverage to flip him. Oh, he does a quick he yeah. toss. Flipped yeah, him? He yeah, he did a yeah, monkey yeah, yeah. flip. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, he hopped up and started. Is he a Jedi? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's possible. Yeah. Uh, he hops up and starts pummeling him on the ground until the storekeeper broke it up. The fight was about two minutes. We were both fucked up. Nice. I was like, you had enough. And he replied, hell nah, you hit me in the face. To which I stated, I'm done. I've had enough for today. And I limped back to work. It took me longer to walk back and reflect on my actions than I did to sustain them. I had to go back to work and tell them I fell off a curb <laughs> and <laughs> to go have the ready med. The physician's assistant thought I broke my ankle, shoulder, and hand. Luckily, none of nice. it was broke, and nobody won the fight. I think you won the fight if you were Sounds on top. Sounds like you won the yeah. fight. the final blows. Yeah, you won the fight if you had to get pulled off. I think the three judges score it for him, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if he yeah. if he hit the guy in the face and the other guy didn't do that, yeah. he wins. Well, no, I think the other guy hit. I think they were hitting each other, but he <laughs> ended the fight on top pummeling. So yeah. I, I would say he mm. won. He flipped the guy off from getting on top of him and started pummeling, doing a little ground to pound. You won the fight. If I won, I would have went back to the store and be like, I need that security footage. Yeah. I got to post this on my social. <laughs> Me just wrecking a guy's shit. Um, he said, fun fact about me. I have been shot, stabbed, and hit by a car. He is from Detroit, so this oh, all okay. makes sense. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like a week, right? That's right. like oh, just getting to work. Um, he said, now I do stand-up comedy, act podcast, and a day job, work as an accountant for the state of Michigan. Wow. Okay. This guy's That's a, busy, a lot. Busy yeah. guy. Busy man. Uh, Rio, Rio, hey, uh, Rio, how Rojas? would you say this? Rojas? It's Rio, first name, R-I-O, Rio. Yeah. yeah. J-A-S. Is that Rojas? Rojas. I mean, Rio Rojas has been emailing and, and yeah, talking yeah. to us for years. Yeah. Yeah, it's Rio Is Rojas. Is it him? Yeah. Oh, God. He's fucking awesome. Yeah. yeah. I love this guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's awesome. All right. He does podcasting, too? Yeah, he has a show. I've told him I'll be a guest. I haven't been asked. That's a guy who knows what's up. <laughs> <laughs> he wants his show to be successful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not right. tarnished. <laughs> this is from Tim Neely, brother of Cam Neely. 
You guys don't know. I don't know. Right. Yeah, yeah, hockey no. player. All right. No. Um, but I wanted to throw the remote at you, like, instinctually. <laughs> hey, guys. First time writer, long time listener. I just wanted to say I'm a big fan of you guys and your podcast. Thank you. Thanks. I'm a transplant from TESD, and the first episode I listened to was Invincible with Walt Flanagan, and I've listened ever since. Thanks. Sick. You guys are now my third, maybe fourth favorite podcast. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. Wait, wait. He's like third. No, nah, maybe, maybe fourth. fourth. You're not that good. Like, <laughs> he couldn't commit to three. Yeah. <laughs> How much do you really like us? Just saying top five probably would have felt a little better. At least that totally would have felt better. Yeah. This is like, yeah. uh, out of this, all the, yeah. this better thing. Why don't do this to us? Or you could lie and say we're your favorite. I right, don't yeah. mind hearing that. When we do hear that, the, the few times that ha that you has been said. You think you're Yeah, it's hard. I, like, yeah. I, I'm like shocked every time. But no, this makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> Third or fourth, you're like, yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. I hope he has like 10 podcasts he listens to, and it's not like. <laughs> he only listens to four. four. Yeah. <laughs> Um, regardless of placement, you guys have gotten me through many long, boring days at work and have been great background noise while I play video games. That's what we like to hear. Yes. Yeah. We like to be just sound. Yeah. Sound in the background so that you don't have to think about your own fucking misery. <laughs> We should have just have started in the middle of the shows having moments of meditation and yeah. ask the listeners to reflect on how <laughs> fucked up they are. Think about how you got here. Listen to our voice. Think about your father. <laughs> All right. Anyways, enough of that. Would he I be have proud a of you? What? Would he be proud of you? He'd be proud of his boy. No, I don't know. <laughs> we we I I really don't know. Um I didn't ask you to know. Oh. I, it was a rhetorical question. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was I I was like starting to reflect. <laughs> it was working on me. Um. Anyways, enough of that. I have a possibly sure. fun question for you guys. Yeah. Let's say one day you guys dethrone Dan Carlin and become the number one history. We podcast. become big history. Yeah. Oh. That's... Then one day, a big Hollywood producer approaches you guys to make Reviewing History the movie. Mm -hmm. You guys are given total creative control. Who do you cast to play Brian, Ant, and Steve? Who do you get to direct and score? And how many Oscars and or Razzies do you think the movie will get? Love you guys and keep up the good work. Ben Stiller's directing it. Ant G is Denzel. Ben Stiller's directing it? Yeah, because I... I, you, want I it, you want it to be black. I want it to be funny. <laughs> And Tropic Thunder, I feel. I don't know, did he direct Tropic Thunder? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I want it to be. Right. I think in that this vein. is how I would cast Angie as Denzel. Yes, of course. That's, Steve is Sydney saying. Sweeney for sex appeal. Yes, go makes yes. yes makes, I have to sense. be race swapped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You are the darkest complexion. It this makes is sense. True. And you're yeah. you're Hugh Jackman. Oh, Hugh Jackman. Yeah. Closet gay. Closeted. <laughs> Very Australian. Great. Love it. Yeah. This is perfect. That's a great as a star studded <laughs> cast. Reviewing history, the movie. Di directing. See, I was gonna suggest Ryan Johnson. Durst. I want I want, want Fred Durst yes. to, to be I want you or direct expectations <laughs> subverted. You want someone who's never directed before. Fred Durst has directed multiple movies. Successfully? Did At least should... one was successful. <laughs> How about Tom Green? Can we get Tom, Tom Green, Green on this? <laughs> that's a good that's actually the, like one of the better ones. I would say Tom Green could probably, probably actually be you. <laughs> That would make more sense, realistically. Now, I want a ruggedly handsome guy. Mm. You got a great actor playing you, at you least. Do. Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, Oscars, I think a full sweep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sydney Sweeney? Yeah. Oh, yeah. the camera loves it. Yeah. Best do actress I nomination. Topless? I mean, we're casting Sydney right? Sweeney. Yeah, we're yeah. not. Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing here if we're not doing that, right? Yeah. Uh, we're sweeping the Oscars, obviously, because it's about us. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. All right. Uh last email. We're not gonna win best audio. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh this is from oh boy. Does uh, this one use racial slurs? Yeah, no, do you vet no. this first or are you just <laughs> just winging it? <laughs> I only pull the ones that use racial slurs. You got a much better chance of getting on if you said that. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Oh boy! This is <laughs> this next is, week's slew is going to be interesting. <laughs> this is from James Skarczewski. Oh, what Polak? Polish? Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I'm not even going to 
try. Don't even try. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. It looks like I just meshed my keyboard. Like that's his, <laughs> oh, last, his last name. name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those Eastern Europeans. I know. All right. Hey guys. Hey. I love the pod, and this is my first time writing in. Thank you. Oh. Though this message is not so much for you guys, it is a plea for the audience. Please allow me to explain. Some time ago, a survey was posted for what would like to be seen as possible reviewing history Patreon content. Oh, yeah. Yes, we've been working on that. Yes, yeah. I've completed the survey. And, it was too long of a and survey. There, there was a lot of interesting shit on there I was hoping we would get to see. Shortly after I submitted, I got to talking with someone on the Reviewing History Instagram, I assume it was Brian, Yes. and said how I would look forward to seeing the Planet of the Apes show. I was, inf- oh. I was informed that the <laughs> Apes show may be the first casualty. No one wanted that. It was Nobody the lowest wanted, score. Right? Yeah. Uh, he said, this is a devastating disappointment and a travesty. <laughs> Apes rule. Planet of the Apes is one of the most important and influential sci-fi series of all time. It's my favorite. I love it. You like it that more than Trek? As just a movie? As Pla- a series. The, not as a series, but as the, the first movie is better than anything Trek ever had. Yeah, the first movie is just a masterpiece. Yeah. yeah. Um, even the less than great entries are highly entertaining and yeah. I believe would offer great value to a recap slash review formatted show or commentary track. There are only 10 movies in the series, so the Patreon show would move quickly before it could overstay its welcome. Not to mention that the show would end on a high note as the Modern Caesar trilogy is nothing short of a masterpiece. Those I haven't seen. You saw the first one. I saw the first one. It was good. You liked uh, it, right? What's his name? James Franco. James Franco. The The other two get better. Each It's the weirdest series because each one is better than the last. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The third one with Woody Harrelson is fucking incredible. You loved it. I love it. Yeah. Hmm. I only know the original stuff. I, I never saw the show. You know, know there was a show. There was a show. Yeah. I I, I would watch it. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think the audience would like it, but this person will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, to have the apes be snubbed in such a fashion by the reviewing history audience is heinous. <laughs> They're uncultured. What yeah. can you say? Yeah. I implore the listeners to reconsider their flagrant disrespect to the apes and develop some taste. That's not going to win them over, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope we'll see some fun Patreon content soon. Apes or no apes. Apes shall never kill apes. Looking back over this, I may have spoken in hyperbole only because <laughs> that's fun to do. But the point still stands. Thanks for doing the pod, guys. I really do love the time I get to spend listening each week. Oh, that's very nice. Jimmy, at Mystic Sushi. P.S. The way Anthony not, eats I a banana think, uh... is fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> what were you about to say? That's a nice email. Yeah, it was, it was nice. <laughs> it's fucked up. That's short, sweet, to the point. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to argue with it. Yeah. I think it's a general consensus, really. What can I say? I'm a trendsetter. <laughs> Just try it, guys. No. I will tell you, because I have a kid, she she can't hold the banana, so I have to break pieces off to her. Mm-hmm. And there are times where I'm breaking like a banana piece in half, and she can't eat the whole banana, so I'm stuck holding the banana. You gotta eat it. And I'm like, well, now I have to eat this. And I think of you every time. Nice. And I'm like, I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to wash my fucking hands. Yeah. I have banana nope. juice everywhere. There's no juice. There's a juice. <laughs> it's gross. It's gross. Yeah, there's one sitting across from me. <laughs> I was going to make the same joke. <laughs> um, uh, so, what do we got for uh, history? I got uh, I'll go first, I yeah, think. Yeah, you go okay. first. All right. I'm bringing a legendary badass to the table. Yes. Legendary? Legendary. Uh-huh. I told Ant who I'm doing. Yes. I am picking Miyamoto. Musashi. I know Ant knows who he Musashi's is. Musashi's actually the first name. Because the Well, the, ja- the Japanese, Japanese reverse. Part, right. Yeah. Musashi Miyamoto? Yes. Yeah. Okay. But for Americans, you know. Right. Yeah. Yes. So this famous guy. Very yeah. important guy. Um, I really was unfamiliar with him until I started doing the research on him. Mm-hmm. He's fucking like the coolest dude. Yeah. All right. So in 1854, he was born. Sorry, 1548. Dyslexia came in. Mm. Yeah. 1854, it's a different story. Totally. Yeah. He was uh, at Sekigahara, right? 
uh, yes, he is. So he's at uh, born in 1548, and his father is like a martial arts Japanese sword expert guy, right? His father goes and has this legendary duel where he beats this guy, and it puts his father in like a prominent position, right? Uh, his father is known as Hiho Sho, which means without equal. Mm. Like he's like the top dog in Japan. His, samurai. He's a samurai. He starts training his kid, Miyamoto. Uh, sorry. Miyamoto. <laughs> Miyamoto. <laughs> Uh, there's so many Japanese words I'm going to butcher in this. <laughs> so listeners who love me to sound like an asshole, you're in for a treat. <laughs> uh, so he starts immediately training his son how to be a badass martial artist, right? Okay. He wants his kid to follow his footsteps. Him and his dad don't get along at all. His father throws a knife at him one time in anger. Mm -hmm. At seven, he's like, I've had enough of your shit. You're disrespectful. Everybody in the kingdom respects fucking except the seven year old except child. the seven year old kid, mm -hmm. and he exiles him. He throws his kid out. He's like, "Get the fuck out of here!" <laughs> so he's wandering as a kid, and he ends up with his uncle. Keep okay, you. You should give the background. This is the Seki Gahara, not the second. The um, the Sengoku period. Well, it's the Shogunate, right? It's before Japan is unified. Okay. So there's the rival kingdoms. rival clans that yeah. vie for power. Yeah, and, that makes more sense. Yeah, yeah I should have given that detail. Um, so he he goes to his uncle, and his uncle is like an ex fighter, but now he's like a monk. He's like an mm -hmm. ex warrior. He's a peaceful. He's person. a man of peace now. Yeah, peace. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put it all behind him. <laughs> and the seven year old is like learning to meditate and do all the shit, but. In his free time, he goes in the woods and just punches trees for hours and shit. Oh, who doesn't? Sounds and, like you. Yeah. And he <laughs> just, like, builds up his martial arts and badassness, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. At 13 years old, he sees a, a sign up in town from this warrior named Arima Kihai. And this guy puts a sign up, and he challenges anybody to a duel. Uh-huh. The 13 year old is like, I'm going to fucking go to that guy and beat his ass. Right. He shows up and the guy's like, what the fucking, this is a kid. Right. The, 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 uh, Miyamoto's uncle comes and he's like, yo, like, don't, don't kill my, my, my nephew. nephew. He doesn't mean to dishonor you. Yes. And Miyamoto, while the guy is like looking at his uncle, Miyamoto bum rushes him and beats him to death with a club. Whoa. And wins the duel. I mean, it's not really winning a duel. <laughs> strike first, strike someone. hard. The Japanese love a good surprise attack. Yeah, that's true. They do not frown on that. That's true. <laughs> so he beats him to death. Three years later, he, he's 16, and he's mm -hmm. like, I'm ready to move, go out on my own. His father is having a war against the Western provinces. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I'm going to join in like my father's army, and I'm going to serve with him. So he, I guess they patch things up. They never really patch things up, but like they can kind of extra, be around each other, mm -hmm. you know? Extra arms are always good. It's you can fight. You're capable. Yeah. We need you. Mm -hmm. He has a unique fighting style. He uses two swords. He's like, it's he's like, he's so awesome. He's like, it's <laughs> Leonardo from Ninja Turtles. Yes. <laughs> he's like, it's dumb to use two hands on one sword. Mm -hmm. He's like, you can hand. have two. Yeah. He's like, you're more deadly. So uh, they go and they take two provinces for the uh, Yoshitaka. The Yoshida clan. Taka. Yeah, that's their clan. He eventually is like, I want to become the best swordsman in all of Japan. Mm -hmm. In Kyoto, their, the, capital. the capital, there is. Or what would become the capital, I believe. Yeah. There's a cl a sword school, right? Mm -hmm. That has like the best swordsman in Japan. He walks in and he's like, I want your best fucking guy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the Yoshioka, Yoshiaka clan, something like that. I don't know. And <laughs> he wanted to fight any of them. He would have just been happy to kill one and establish himself. Mm -hmm. But the top dog is there. It's like, you're calling out my fucking school. I'll kill you. Fuck you. Yeah. So they're getting ready to fight. Mushashi comes and just fucking like sucker attacks and kills him. 
beats him. Beats his ass without warning and wins. Uh, the guy's name was Sejuro. That's who he beat. Uh-huh. The guy's brother is like, you killed my fucking brother. Brother, I'm coming to kill you. You have to duel me uh-huh. in the same spot. Uh-huh. So they go to the same spot. The guy's brother tries to sneak attack mm-hmm. on uh, M- Musashi. Musashi. Musashi wins. They grabs like the guy's weapon and beats him to death with it. With the hilt of his sword. Yeah. That's he sick. really doesn't like stabbing people, huh? He just likes blunt he, it trauma. It seems like he likes to really like- <laughs> Blunt trauma. Blunt <laughs> trauma, yeah. Which is his most famous moment. We'll get to that later. Um, and he wins. Now he's like- the the sword school is has a fucking bounty on this dude's head. Mm-hmm. They're like, this guy killed our top two dudes. We cannot let him leave the province. Uh-huh. We have to put this guy down. They send 100 students after him. Uh-huh. They have sticks, arrows, bows, everything. He so sent the shinobi. He is like, fuck this. He points out who the leader is. While everyone is trying to attack him, he just focuses on this guy, Mata Sishiro. And he... <laughs> God, I'm sorry. How would you say it? I don't know. Mata Shiro. All right. Mata Shishiro. He, he beats the guy's ass. He beats him to death. Uh-huh. The other hundred students back off. What? Wow. There's a hundred of them. He killed the leader. They're like, what the fuck? They're like those guys from the <laughs> fifth element. Yeah. Right. They can't fight without the leader. Right. Ba- yeah. Bangalores. Now. <laughs> Lee he- Evans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now he goes and it's like he has the rep of being the best swordsman in, in all of Japan. Yeah. Like he's beating everybody's ass. He starts traveling the country, going to different like schools and disciplines. Mm-hmm. Beating everybody up, proving he's the best. He he's goes raiding dojos. Basically, he goes to this um, these warrior monks who are lance ex- experts, mm-hmm. and he beats them, and establishes dominance. Eventually, he goes to Edo and starts his own school. After some time of teaching people, he's like, "All right, I'm kind of bored here," and he travels. On his way back, he's going to where his father lives. Um, he has a legendary duel with this guy named Sasaki Kojiro. He's kind of viewed as the second best Swordsman. of that time, mm-hmm. of that time, right? And they're getting ready to have a duel. And he, as his weapon, he picks a wooden sword he carved from the ore he used to get back to like where his father is. From a boat ore. A boat ore. Mm-hmm. He just, he's like, I'm going to use this wooden club. To beat you to death. And they have a fight, and he beats him to death with the oar and kills him. The guy has a sword. He has an oar, a carved oar. Wow. It's it's a really famous moment in the guy's life. They have a statue of it in Japan of mm-hmm. him with, like, the boat oar attacking yeah, the yeah, sword. Yeah. I've heard, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've actually heard of this before. That's brutal. It's cool. Um, if you're watching, you're seeing it now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. After he wins, he goes by his father and starts another school. Right, he gets a letter from an ex student that he had trained named Mizuno Katsunori, and he's like, "Hey, there's a war. I want you to come and fight for the Tokugawa." Right. He's like, "Okay, like you're my ex student. Like he, that was my guy. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna come." He goes, Matsu, um, Katsunor, Katsunari is like, "Hey, protect my son." He's like, "Okay, they're in battle." There, he's leading a brigade of thousands of men. Right. Sekigahara. Sekigahara. This is like the pivotal battle in Japanese history. It's the, like the biggest battle ever. Tons of swordsmen. Multiple clans of fighting each other. Yes. And the Tokugawa come out on top. And he successfully takes Osaka Castle. Right. And then they take over the whole country. They take over the country. Yeah. It's, he's the leader. He of unified it. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Basically. Yeah. After that. There's he adopts the son of a fallen soldier, right? And in Japan, I guess when you have a son, you give him to a lord at some point to learn under him, yeah. And like almost like a hostage type deal, only less. It's not a hostage, le- less adversarial. It's more honorable. Like yeah. you're gonna go learn right. from this guy and rise up through the ranks. Mm-hmm. Um. Wh- while this is happening, Musashi plans and builds Akashi Castle. 
meticulously plans and builds it. Mm -hmm. Like every bush, tree, the way it's designed, everything. Like he was obsessed about design. it. It's his design. The Lord dies that his adopted son is with, and now his son is to kill himself. No, oh, no. He has to commit seppuku. After this, he spends a year in the wilderness just meditating because he's like devastated and wrecked. Hmm. Afterwards, he's like, okay, I need to kind of move on. He builds a giant, huge dojo and just stops bathing, taking care of himself. Mm. He's just like a fucking like disheveled bum. But Has he written the book yet? Not yet. He's still a great teacher. He gets a letter. There's a third war going on. Japanese Christians, 20,000 of them, yeah. are storming through Japan. They write a letter like, we need you to put this down. He takes 8,000 dudes and he beats the 20,000 Christians. Now, I'm not really familiar with this event. Can you uh, uh, get off the top of your head any more detail? Just the Portuguese had imported Catholicism to Japan and it caused a myriad of social problems. Okay. Like the it's a foreign religion that now these foreigners that keep showing up on the coast have sway over these people. They're bringing in priests and things. It's, and it has, it can upend their entire side. Yeah. Side. So the Japanese tried to crack down on it and like outlaw the faith. But once, you know, the faith has taken hold, the people are not going to take kindly when you try to fucking, yeah. you know, take them out. So they, they revolted. Okay. I don't know the ins and outs of it off the top of my head, but yeah, that's more or less okay. what happened. Uh, he takes 8,000 and beats 20,000 and he puts down their uprising. Mm -hmm. Impressive. I believe, now I thought he more or less at that point kind of got Christianity out of Japan essentially. Never, more no. Or less. no it, it never really completely goes away. Like to this day, there's plenty of Christians in Japan yeah. that celebrate Christmas and all that. But uh, Shinto is the dominant religion, Shinto and Buddhism. Mm -hmm. I guess you could say because of kind of him leading that, probably. Yeah, uh, it definitely uh, put a hold on what was happening. Uh huh. <laughs> um, so after this, he's rewarded with a giant mansion. And he's still teaching and stuff, but he's like, OK, I'm going away. And he goes into this cave and he writes the book of the five rings. Right. The five rings are earth, fire, water, wind, and heaven. <laughs> are you familiar with this book at all? Uh, yeah, it's like the seminal work of like samurai shit. Yeah, and he goes into like, <laughs> see, he goes into detail about fighting and yeah. all this stuff. He basically rips into every other form of fighting style that mm -hmm. isn't his and like abuses everybody. He talks about all his past duels, everything. Mm -hmm. And it's also filled with like life lessons, kind of like uh, meditations. Yeah. By like Marcus Aurelius, like shit like that. Um, just a bunch of thoughts. And he eventually dies, obviously. And they have a, a memorial and a stat. They have the statue, which I mentioned before, but they build a memorial to him uh, called Mount Musashi. And for years, like Japanese swordsmen, when they're passing through, would like stop and like pray at it, and worship it. Yeah, yeah, like Alexander. Exactly. But uh, yeah, that's the story of Miyamoto Musashi. That's awesome. Pretty cool, badass, right? Yeah, yeah. Just slaughtering. He's an all timer people. in the top ten for all time badass. I think. <laughs> yeah. Just slaughtering people left and right. Do you, I, do you, most people, I feel like they don't know him. And by the way, there's movies about him and shit too, which eventually- oh, He's like a national there. hero over there. Yeah, he's like their, um, I don't even know who, like who would that be here? Just Daniel Boone? That's Davey a, Crockett? Yeah, that's, like, that's kind of, uh, that's a good analogy, I guess. Frontiers folk. Yeah, right? Like I don't yeah. even know who else, just a badass dude. <laughs> Who goes? Me? Steve? Uh, mine is actually somewhat tied to Brian's in a weird way. All right, go All ahead. Right, um, and it's a little, sh it's going to be shorter than yours. Have you guys ever heard of the Fugo bomb? No. No. Ah, good. So I know about the Fubu bomb. That's what I would say my clothes were in 99. <laughs> and that joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, Aunt laughed. That was a good joke. <laughs> it got a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> so... The Fugo bomb was actually a Japanese weapon 
It was an incendiary balloon that was invented f- uh, um, oh. for World War II. Oh, you yeah, heard about we, this? We know this. Do yeah. you? Yes. Do you know what happened with it? Yes, I do. Okay, cool. <laughs> I didn't. This is a great story. It's it's really cool. Yeah. So between November uh, 1944 and April 1945, the Imperial Japanese Army decides that they're going to launch an attack on the United States. Okay. And You know about this, right? Yeah, yeah I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah? Okay. Um, they decide we're going to use incendiary balloons and we're going to use jet streams to send them over to the, the mainland ocean. in the United States. Yeah. Balloon attack. Balloon attack. So the balloon itself is pretty much just – it's almost like a hydrogen balloon with like bombs attached to it. They hang off. That hang off. So the goal is once they reach a certain point, when they explode, it'll actually set fire to forests, cities, whatever that it could catch up. Right? They they figured out that the balloons would probably end up in the Pacific Northwest, right? Which is, as we know, heavily forested. Yes, mm-hmm. which would cause massive fires. Massive fires, massive problems. That was the goal, similar to like the bat thing that they were yeah. doing to the Japanese, only, right? Like with balloons, right? They launched the bat bomb was never deployed though, right? No. <clears throat> they launched nine thousand three hundred balloons over the course of this time. Um, three hundred of them, but were- ninety nine were red balloons. Ah, <laughs> Nena. <laughs> <laughs> Only about three hundred of them were actually found or observed. Okay. Um, but the bombs are ineffective of starting fires. Why? Because weather happens. So these things are exploding and landing and... In the Pacific Northwest, the Pacific which is Northwest. Rainy. rainy. Where is this raining? <laughs> <laughs> so with no forest fires be- happening, with nobody dying, the United States Intelligence Committee well, or well, agency actually were barring this this information to the Japanese. Right. They were blocking it so that they just didn't even know it was failing. They, no one was allowed to report on it. Mm-hmm. There was like complete media blackout. Oh, really? Yeah. So they yeah, didn't like the United that States was did not want them letting the Japanese know if it, if they made it or not. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's just like don't you don't know don't talk about it. Yeah. Uh, so the um, I think if they did kill. You couldn't do that. Hold on, that's what I'm getting to. All right, yeah, that's what I'm getting to. Uh, May fifth, nineteen forty five. Six civilians were actually killed in Oregon. It's World War II's only fatalities. In on the mainland, mainland United States, mainland United I States. I guess if you don't count the downwinders, <laughs> <laughs> what are the downwinders? The people that got cancer and died. Oh, from oh, the the down, oh, those guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, from well, an well, attack. Yeah, well, <laughs> from an attack. What about like all the shipping that got blown up on the East Coast from U boats on and on shit? land? All right, on land, all right. mainland United States. <laughs> This was hey, the I only. Mean, I mean, those yeah. guys got cancer on land. <laughs> <laughs> it was friendly fire, but still. <laughs> but I didn't know this. I, I didn't know that this was happening, and I, I dug in a little bit, and I was like, "Wow, I can't believe we actually lost." You know? Oh yeah, that's that's nice. What um, is that? I'm wishing cancer upon. <laughs> that's Scott. He's a dick. <laughs> There's a bunch of pictures that I want you to show for the video, where like they found these balloons. They're okay. massive. They're, I think it killed children, right? Weren't they school they children? Were, they were kids. Yeah, yeah there were, they were some kids as well. There was like a group of six people. Um, but yeah, I didn't know that. They like happened upon – it had hit there's, the ground and not blown up and they like happened upon it. They the walked over and it exploded. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And there's videos of – you could actually see P-38 lightnings shooting these things down. Mm-hmm. So like we knew about it. We're, we're defending against most of yeah, it. Yeah, they were sending air – they were sending planes after yeah. them. But it turns out, I think the the Japanese had about two thousand men launching these like consecutively, like right. over the course. Eventually, of the time. it would have worked. You Eventually, would. you were going to get hit pretty bad. Right. Yeah. So we we dodged a a, a, mm-hmm. a serious attack there. What kind of barbers, barbarous people, would just launch an attack on a civilian population? Right. How can how can they let with that fire go on? with fire <laughs> yeah. with awful fire and explosives? <laughs> Who would do such a thing? There's a monument for it too. It's a Mitchell monument. For you, the six you sent a, a video talking about us dropping the bombs. I did. Uh, yeah, recently because I think we just passed. Oh, the uh, it was the right? war against humanity with uh, Spartacus Olson. Is that the 79th anniversary of the bomb or the 80? 79. 80 will be next year. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, I just I get a little annoyed when people kind of talk about the atomic bomb. And I just don't like when people give America shit for it. And I get why people do. Mm -hmm. It just always fucking annoys me to no end. I mean, you just gave America shit for it moments ago. Yeah. Oh no! But you're I doing was, it I ironically. Was, I was yeah. justifying. Yeah. <laughs> well, believe it or not, <laughs> that's what I was doing. So if you're if you're a listener who goes like exploring and stuff, um, these balloons are being found with the bombs still attached all over the United States. Get really? out of town! Yeah. In fact, in 2014, they uh, found one of these the, things in British Columbia. The the Navy had to detonate one. Um, Holy shit! In 2019, uh, the remains of another balloon were found in British Columbia. So if you ever come across a giant balloon, don't go near it. <laughs> In Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Be careful. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So it's it's it was interesting. That and if you want to look more into it, there's a whole like uh details about like the censorship campaign and right. I just that love that of... something. So it's the Fugo, yeah. but in Japanese it's the Go F U. <laughs> Come on, that was good. That was a good one. That was a good one. I liked it. I liked it a lot. It's topical. Yeah. Yeah, very topical. <laughs> but yeah, when you said like they have no qualms about doing surprise attacks. Mm. Yep. They love a good surprise attack. They love attack. it. They love it. Pearl Harbor. Well, that this. would be the big one. That's the big one. This. Yeah, look, I'm just, <laughs> Beating somebody to you, death. Sometimes you got to use everything at your disposal to put someone down. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Hence the term, we're going to get japped. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. But anyway, we played when I, was, when I was on the wrestling team. This would not fly today, but we played a game called Jap. What's Jap? Where, and this was the sanctioned by the coach. This wasn't like touch the red sun. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've spoken about that. Yeah, like it was, it was approved. So Jap was one wrestler would get in the middle of the mat. Every other wrestler would run laps and you were given a number. And when the coach called your number at any moment, you were allowed to go and attack the, the guy in the middle? Wrestler. And if you took him down, you were now in the middle. Why? Do you, you want to be in the middle? Yeah, you don't have to run. Well, you don't have to run, but it's also <laughs> like you want to win and You're establish yeah. like dominance. Dominance, we do, yeah. We do that at, uh, We do that in like jujitsu classes sometimes. Yeah. Something similar where so, you, you, you stay mm. on the ground and you have to like beat the person. Yeah, then, king of the mountain king shit. King of the mountain, yeah. But, it's like Varg's kids. But you would have kids who like, <laughs> they, they would like they, they call eight, and you would have a bunch of kids running in and crossing but it wouldn't necessarily be your opponent. Oh, right? you, don't know uh, you don't know where, where the attack's attacks. coming from. Mm. You know? Mm. That was always fun. Yeah, that sounds fun. The other game we played was Touch the Red Sun. What's that? So on the, on a school bus. That sounds like a Superman variant. It like does. alternate Touch timeline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it also sounds somewhat perverted if you want to go that route too. So, on, yeah. On a, yeah. <laughs> yeah, touch my red sun. It's the hot. Red, the red devils. <laughs> but um, on the uh, on a school bus, they have like the emergency exit and there's the red light. Yeah. You would have to start at the middle point of the bus and you would have to your turn. You would have to run and touch the red light. Slam it. OK. Everybody else on the trying team is you. trying to stop you uh -huh. and beat your ass. Uh -huh. So, like, they're trying to hold you down and just wail on you and beat the shit out of you. Uh -huh. And you had to touch the red sun in order for your turn to end. So you would Were you any good at this? I was really good. So I mean, you're not the tallest guy, though. Yeah, but I'm a good wrestler. Sneak and I was wiry and I would fight. Through. Yeah, I never not touch the sun. Mm -hmm. Eventually, like if a guy's down and we're just probably, it was like this isn't happening. <laughs> but my big contribution to the game was from the defensive standpoint, like defending the sun. Mm -hmm. What I realized is battle strategy and planning. So what I would do is I would get the guy in the aisle across from me, and I would have him connect the two. Um, the two seatbelts seat together on the bus. This is this is you putting tar on the fucking yeah, battlefield. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so now the guy running trips on seatbelts. Trips belts. on it, falls down, and everyone just wails <laughs> on him, making it way harder to tar touch on, the sun. Because now you have field. obstacles you have to worry about. Wow. <laughs> and Brian sets him on fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? Uh, I want to talk about a guy named Joe Petrosino. Joe Pesci? Okay. Joe Pe He's very Pesci-like. He's only 5'3". Okay. Um, Joe Petrosino uh, is an Italian man. 
obviously. Yeah. <laughs> he immigrated to the United States in 1873. It's an early one. Yeah, that's one of the first ones. One. Yes. And he grew up on the streets of New York. And uh, one does. became very well known as like a street fighter. Hadouken! He's a tough guy. <laughs> Warriors today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he would just beat the shit out of like people that would mess with him. The Irish. Uh, and then he became a <laughs> yes, the Irish. Yeah. And became a street the butcher. He became a street sweeper in 1880s, 1890s New York, as you can imagine, there's a lot of horses. He's fighting yeah. Tom Cruise. He would f- sweep shit around. Okay. But he got a good reputation. And uh, a local police captain by the name of Alec Clubber Williams, who was known That's for okay. his corruption, okay. uh no- took notice of Joe. And we're going to start a protection racket. Came to him and said, <laughs> uh, I want you to be a New York City police officer. So Joe took up the job and became the first Italian on the NYPD. Okay. Sick. Um, the Italian immigrant population at the time is growing and growing and growing. Uh, I think around the time he started, it was up to like 500,000 in New York okay. City. Um, they live in their own little segmented areas like a little italy yeah. one would say you yeah. said it not me <laughs> one would say um he looks like yeah. ralph cramden he's very ralph cramden he um huh. he became a super cop he's like one of the greatest police officers of all time really yes uh he could speak every Italian dialect, so he could talk to anybody. Wait, there's mul- I didn't know this. There's multiple dialects? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, northern Italy is full of Germans. Yeah. Um, Wait, what? Southern, yeah, I mean, the Austria controlled it for how fucking long? Um, so they don't speak Italian? They speak Italian, but it's like a different type Italian, of Italian. Really? Like yeah, German like Italian Sicilians and, northern, and like people in Milan – can barely understand each other. Italian with French influence. All right, but if yeah. we take, if we take, Italian with Spanish when you're influence. taking like Italian in Staten Island, what are you learning? You're learning like upper class Italian. Italian. Yeah. Okay. Like Sicilian is different. Yeah. Like Sicilians are using like crazy poor people slang. Yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can understand a little bit of Sicilian. I can't speak it though. Okay. Right. Um, this guy could do it all. Uh, so he could talk to anybody. He was kind of viewed as like almost a race trader because the Italians, they don't. I will say the Italians probably haven't done the greatest job in the world of integrating into the United States to this day. You don't think so? I think they did a very good job compared to some other groups, but the, we still have our individuality. Uh, but doesn't most every group kind of still have their little individual Well, yes, because, because the melting pot isn't actually real. <laughs> <laughs> There's no such thing. Um I, Italians did more to change the U.S. than the U.S. did to change Italians, I think. I mean, That's interesting. Yeah. I, I mean, if you look at the the second, the first half of the 20th century, Italians r- run the, the United States culturally. Yeah. They take it over. Yeah. Uh, I mean, talk about Joe DiMaggio. Right. Fiora LaGuardia to mm-hmm. Robert De Niro. Sinatra. Yeah, all mm-hmm. that shit. Um, anyway, this guy Petrosino, right? He starts getting, he becomes a, a master of infiltrating the black hand. Now, the black hand um. are, is like the precursor to the mafia. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're extortion. Are people. they the same group as World War One? No. No, no, no. That's that the, is the same name. Same though. name. Oh, okay. Yes. No, you're, you're thinking of like the Serbian black hand. Yeah, I just wanted is... to see if they were connected. No, like, no, no, an no. Very different. Right. Um no, these are these are extorters. They would like kidnap people and say, "Give us, you know, X amount of money, and we'll we won't kill your yeah. loved one," uh, or like just threaten violence, like break up shops and stuff, mafia shit. Mm-hmm. Um, he put a ton of these guys away and had them deported from the country. Uh, he also the Italian sectors were having a lot of problem with bombs. Okay. He invented the bomb squad. Really? Yes. He put together a team of of guys. He hired these six other Italian guys to become like just an Italian squad to like police the Italians because yeah. there's such an issue. Um, what else? Oh, there's a famous story about uh, a guy. He was involved with this banker. He like ran a, an Italian bank. Yeah. And the black hand kidnapped the guy's son. And they, they told him they wanted $20,000 uh, or they'd kill his son. And 
they people that were at his bank found out about it and they thought that he would use their funds from the bank to pay off these guys so there's a run in the bank and he lost his business and stuff but he put a he like he went to petrosino for help and he saved his son he got him back hmm. huh. um so this guy's a real badass he is totally it's a come. badass um he had a wife and daughter uh his daughter he wouldn't acknowledge on the street because he knew Smart. he had a ton of enemies. Yeah, that would try to get his And daughter. if they ever found out who he was related to, they would have gone through them to attack him. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, 1909. Uh, I believe 1909. Yeah, 1909. He gets sent to Italy by the NYPD. Okay, Italy. Yes. He goes back home. And he's going to go there and coordinate with Italian police to get information on international mafia guys people yeah. like criminals that if they ever show up in america the nypd will know who they guys are. who are fleeing Italy, right yeah. yes um the press loved him by the way they were constantly writing stories about hero him cop, yeah. yeah the hero cop from a minority population right yeah it's a good story so the press finds out he's going on this trip to italy and they make the mistake of making it public. God damn. Yep. So <laughs> when he gets to Italy, there are hundreds, of if not assassins. thousands of people that he has gotten kicked out of the country uh, ready and waiting for him. <laughs> so while he is doing his business, I think it was April 12th, uh, 1909. I don't know. No, that was the press day. ruined everything. I don't know what day it was. It was like March uh, 1909. He's go walking like to his office in Italy and gets assassinated. Pew, pew, pew. They kill him. Uh, they brought his body back to New York. April April twelfth was declared a citywide holiday, so businesses were closed. Okay, twenty two hundred and fifty thousand people attended his funeral. Wow! Wait, uh, how many? Two hundred and fifty thousand. Holy shit! He's buried in Queens. Wow. Uh, and he is the only NYPD officer to die in the line of duty outside of the United States. Huh. Wow. Yeah. Press uh, ruined everything, man. Yeah. Um, he, at one point, had the record for most homicides solved in one year. I think really? it was 17. Yeah. Guy's a super cop. This guy's pretty wow. fucking cool, 17? man. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, there's movies about him. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, what do we got? So there's a silent film about him. Of course, yeah. Which I, I we got a scene from 1912. That's got to be incredible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's one called Joe Petrosino from 1934. Mm -hmm. Might be a missing film. There's one from 1960 starring Ernest Borgnine. Oh, that's we great. Gotta, we got to do that, right? Yeah. Pick, yeah. <laughs> then there's one called The Black Hand from 1973 starring Lionel Stander. Mm-hmm. We got to the 60s one. These sound great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, like I said, he was 5'3". He was below the um, height allowable requirement. height requirement. They had to bend the rules to get him in. Okay. And then he just kicked ass. 5'7 was, the, was what just, you, minimum. He just kicked so much ass. Yeah. Wow. And apparently Gene Kelly played a character based on him in a movie called The Black Hand from 1950. Hmm. So we got we to cover this guy a lot. Yeah. 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 I had no idea. That's cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool though. This mm -hmm. guy. That's awesome. And we might got both our guys have movies about him. Yeah. yeah. Steve picking the fucking bomb. He should have picked a badass. <laughs> I didn't know we were going badass. Nobody told me. <laughs> it just worked out one. that way. I'll pick a badass next time. <laughs> I want this something short and sweet this time. Next time, I think is horror. I believe. Uh, I believe the next block. Oh, is we're getting to October. Are, oh, it's spooky season. I believe the next it's one upon is, us again. I believe so. I have a good spooky story. Then never mind. Okay. Yeah, we'll 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 talk. Yeah. Mm. But uh, anyway, that was that was good. That was a fun episode. Yeah. Well, we got to do our picks. Oh, we got to do our picks. You're right. Yeah. I'll go first. I'm gonna pick "Come and See: A Romp Riot." <laughs> Just a, a feel good movie. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen that. I'm excited. You're lying. You just saw it. We just talked about it. Yeah, but this comes out before. <laughs> so. He can never do it. Yeah. He can never just play. I don't like role. lying to the audience. It's not lying. This comes out a week before, you know? <laughs> Damn it. We're just messing with space time a bit. It's like time traveling. It's like, just, just let him have it. It's like the year of hell. Yeah. Let him have it. <laughs> Is that a call forward? It's a call forward. Yeah. <laughs> 
You'll get it next week. Maybe. <laughs> you still might not. Am I going first or him? Uh, you. Mine? I want to pick so- a movie that I really like a lot, actually. Uh, the Men Who Stare at Goats. Okay. We're going to look at some fucking... Are they, bo- some goats. Not, are they bovine? What? No, that's no. a cow. What's, uh, what's like the technical name for a cat? A, cat, a goat. It's a goat. The technical name is, is goat. A goat. A cloven-hoofed a creature. Cloven-hoofed yeah, creature. I mean, yeah. yeah. Prey. Yeah. <laughs> Dinner. <laughs> Gyros. Uh, it's, yeah, the, it's, uh, they belongs to the Bovide, Bovide family. He was right? Yeah. There you go. Fuck you guys. <laughs> okay. Yeah, fuck you too. What are you picking? Um, the Man for All Seasons. The Man for All Seasons. Thomas More. Thomas Have you ever Moore. Seen it? Yes, I have. It's great. Yeah, it's a great oh, movie. The guy who this. played Quint plays Henry VIII. Yes. <laughs> I've never seen this. So. Robert Shaw. Robert Shaw. All yeah, right. That's, yeah. That's good picks. That's going good picks. We're going, we're going to a nice mix here. It's going to be fun. It's nice. Yeah. All right. You guys want to say bye? Bye. Bye. <laughs> want to give a big thank you to Tell him Steve Dave. Last record down in the studio. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, big thank you to Bri Q, Walt Gannam. Last record down. It'd here. be great if they didn't let us and we just were breaking it every time. Every time, yeah. <laughs> hey, we have a key now, so we could. Ah, right, the key to the castle. Yeah. Nice. Um, I have a chair. Big thank you to everybody listening and or watching. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, like and subscribe. Follow the show on all social media at our view history pod on Twitter. Reviewing history pod everywhere else. Follow me personally on all social media at Brian Rupert. That's with two P's. Follow me on Letterboxd. I rank every, every single movie I watch, even the ones in my personal life. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you next time. Bye.